Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 13 of my C Sharp video tutorial. This one's going to be quite fun because we're going to talk about manipulating lists in really cool ways. I'm going to cover lambda, where, to list, select, zip, aggregate, average, all, any, distinct, accept, and intersect. And like always, all the code as well as the transcript of this video is available in the description underneath the video, and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so here we are back inside of Visual Studio. And what I'm going to do here is to create a delegate. We're going to use delegates once again. And we're only going to use it for one example, though. And I am going to call this double it. And it's going to receive a double and a value inside of it. And this delegate is going to be assigned what we call a lambda expression. And I have to make sure I put it inside of the class area here, otherwise we won't be able to see it. So let's just paste that inside of there. All right, now we can jump down in main and start writing some code. Now, like we did with predicates earlier, Lambda expressions are going to allow you to use anonymous methods that define the input parameters on the left and the code to execute on the right. So what I'm gonna do here is assign a Lambda to the delegate that I just created here. So I'm going to say double it once again, and I'm just going to go double it. And, and then here is where we are going to define our lambda. Now, like I said, it's going to receive a value on the left, and then it's going to perform an operation on that value on the right, right like that. So there we are. I just created that. Now what we're going to be able to do is, and this is a simple example, we'll get into more complicated things as this continues. Now what I'm going to go and do is I am going to call for it to execute. So I can say something like 5 times 2 is equal to, and then I can reference that delegate up, up inside of there. So we can say double it like this, and then pass the 5 directly inside of there, and then close that off. And if we execute it, you're going to see that indeed that is going to double the five. Whoops, says I have an error. What's this? Name double it doesn't exist in the current context. Oh, okay. So I just forgot to put the B inside of there. No problem. Get that. And let's run it again. And you can see indeed it took the five, multiplied it times the two, and we got a value of 10. Okay, so not terribly exciting, but let's go and let's create something a little bit more complicated. Now you don't have to use delegates, and here what I'm gonna do is search through a list to find all the even numbers, for example. So first what I wanna do is I wanna create a list, and it's going to be an integer list, and I'm gonna go number list is equal to new list, and then we'll just go and throw some random values inside of here. So I'll throw one, and nine, and two, and six, and three. And then what my goal here is to come in here and be able to find just the even values. And then what I'm going to do after that is put those even values in a list. Now we can just use var here just to keep everything nice and simple. And I'm going to say that I want an even list. And to do that, I reference the number list that I want to work with up inside of here. And then I can use where and I can define inside of here what specifically I'm looking for. So I'm looking for a situation in which the parameter passed inside of it when modulus of two is taken out against it that we are going to get a value of zero. And that is how we're going to be able to check if we have an odd number or not. Because of course, when you do the modulus of an even value, if it comes back to zero, that means it's odd. We are then going to convert this into a list just to make this easy to work with. And then I can come in here and I'm going to show you a couple other different ways we can output list information. I can go in and check to make sure that this indeed worked for me. So we can go in to console, of course, and let's just output all of those guys on the screen. So there we go. And if we run it. You're going to see that it just outputted two and six because those are the only two even values inside of our list. All right. So a pretty neat way to be able to do some rather complicated things here. Now what I want to do is show you how to add values in a range to a list. So we can come in again, and I'm going to call this range list is equal to, and I'm going to use the number list that we already have here, and I'm going to say where in x, remember we're getting the value from this list that we're working with, and then I'm going to say that x is greater than 2 or and then define another situation, x is less than nine. 
I'm then going to take those results and convert those into a, a list that we can work with. And then let's get rid of this right here so we don't have any confusion. Just cut that out of there and paste that down inside of here. And this is going to be changed to range list. And specifically, we're looking for values that are greater than two and less than nine. And if we run that, you're gonna see that we get, actually, now that I'm thinking about this, this makes more sense to have this be and. So I'm looking for values of X that are greater than two, but less than nine. So save it and let's run it. And you're gonna see that six and three come back as a result. All right, so another way to sort through information in lists. Now let's do something a little bit more interesting. What I wanna do here is find the number of heads and tails that are flipped randomly. And what I'm gonna use just to keep everything simple is one is gonna represent a head and two is going to represent a tail. So what I wanna do is come in here and define our list. And I'm gonna call this flip list is equal to new list like that. And then I'm going to come in here and generate random values. So I'm just gonna say i is equal to zero. And I'm going to generate a random number generator is equal to new random. And then I'm gonna use a while loop to fill this list up. So I'm gonna say while i is less than 100, flip list, and I'm gonna add a either a one or a two to this guy. And to do that, I just go round and next, and I wanna get values from one to two. So I'm gonna to have to put one to three inside of there. The three isn't counted. And then I'm gonna increment the value for i. All right, so that's how we're going to create our list and then fill our list up with information. And now what I wanna do is come in here and using a lambda, I'm gonna print out the number of heads and number of tails that were randomly generated for us. So come in there, do this, and I'm just gonna say heads and throw in whatever the value for heads is gonna be, the number of matches we got. And to do so, I can go flip list, and then we can say where a, and this is going to be each value of the list is gonna come in here and we're gonna check if it's equal to one. Then after that, we can come in and we can say two list. And then after that, we're going to count the number of matches that we had. All right, so that's gonna tell us the number of heads. And this guy right here is gonna tell us the number of tails. And I just need to change that to two. And that's gonna work for us. And if we save it and run it, you're gonna say, whoa, it came back exactly 50-50. That's uncommon, actually. Run it again. This time we got 51 heads and 49 tails. And let's run it one more time. And here we got 49 heads and 51 tails. Okay, so pretty accurate representation there. And just another example. Why don't we do one more? Let's try finding all names that start with a specific letter. So I'll just come in and I'm gonna say var name list is equal to new list, and this is going to be strings. And then I'm gonna throw some random names inside of here. So we got Doug, and we have Sally, and let's spell Sally right, and we have Sue. All right, so we got the list generated, and now what we're looking to do is find the number of names that have a value of s starting off the name so we'll save or i'll call this s name list and to check the name list we go name list and where and here i'm going to say x is and i'm going to pull in those values and i can say x starts with and there we go so we have that brand new guy right there and then let's say i want to cycle through all these different guys so i can say for each var m in s name list and then after that we can output all of the s names inside of there so here we are and i'm just going to output them I'm not going to do anything else fancy with it and we can run it and you can see that it popped out sally and sue okay so some neat stuff we can do with lambdas as well as a couple other little neat little tools and now i'm going to talk about select all right, so basically select is going to allow us to execute a function on each item in a list. So what we wanna do is come in here and generate a list of values, let's say from one to 10, like this, and new list, and this is going to be just integers and create that guy. 
Now let's come in here and add a range of values to this. So I'll go add range, and I'm on purpose using the same things over and over again, these tutorials, just so they sort of click in your head. And the range that I want is one to 10. So there we go, we have our list now, and how hard would it be to come in here and get the square of all those values and then store them in a list? Well, we can go var and squares is equal to one, two, whoops, spell that right, one, two, 10, and then select, and then we are going to perform lambda calculation on this. This is just gonna take the value and multiply it times itself and store that in a list. And then we come in and output that information once again. And here, what I'm gonna do is go var L in squares, and then output each one of those values. So like this, and then we'll just have L and we'll run it. And you can see it went through each one of those values and multiplied it times itself, okay? So that's how we can use select. Just a simple example, go in here and experiment, do your own little things. But now we're gonna talk about zip. Now zip is going to apply a function to two lists and what it's gonna do is add values uh, in this situation. I'm gonna use two lists and add the values from both the lists together. So let's go and create a list and I'm going to call this list one is equal to new list and we'll go new integer array and then throw some values inside of here. I'm gonna throw one, three and four inside of there. Save that, and then let's generate another list. And what we're gonna do is add these two lists to each other. So we'll go list two, and let's just change the values. So we'll change this to four, six, and uh, eight. All right, so there we go. Now we can use zip to add the values together. So I'm gonna call this sum list is equal to list one and zip. And then we're gonna go list two, and then whatever we want to add to it. So we'll, set, we'll get a value from this, uh, list one and that's going to be represented with the X and we'll also get a value from list two which is going to be represented with the Y and then we're going to tell it that we want to add those two values together. Now you don't necessarily have to add them, you can do whatever you want with them. So we'll go to list again and then we can come in and output our results to see what we got. So variable N in sum list and then output that information. And to do so, just throw in inside of there. And let's run it, see how that works. And there you can see that we were able to add those two value or those three values in two separate lists to each other. Okay, so that's how we can work with lists and manipulate values between those lists. And now I want to give you an example of how we can use aggregate. Now aggregate is going to perform an operation on each item in a list and then whatever the value is after each operation, it's going to carry those results forward. So let's say I wanted to sum values in a list. How can we do that? Well, let's go and create another number list to new and another integer list. And let's go and give this the values of one, two, three, four, and five. And I'm gonna sum those together. And what it's gonna do is it's going to add one plus two and then carry that result forward, which is gonna be three and add that to three and so forth and so on. That's how aggregate works. And let's go and simplify this a little bit and sum these together. So I can just say sum and then get the value here which is gonna be number list two, and then call aggregate, and then define how we wanna work with this. So I wanna get A and B, which are gonna be the first and the second value, and that's gonna move up to the second and the third, and so forth and so on. And I wanna add them together. So A plus B, and that's that. And if we run it, you're gonna see that it takes that list, sums it together, and we get a final result of 15. Okay, so that's a way that we can add or divide or subtract or do whatever you want with different values and then carry the results forward as you proceed through your list. So now let's take a look at average. Now average is gonna do basically what you think it's gonna do. It's gonna give you an average of a list of different values. So it'll go in here, create another list, int list again, and let's just do the same thing. I could have just kept that list there on the screen, but it's no problem going in here and having you type things over and over again because that's how they stick in your head. Now to output this information, what I'm going to do is use something called as queryable. 
And what that's going to allow us to do is to manipulate the collection in a way that is going to allow us to calculate the average. So we can come in and we'll output something on the screen here. We'll get the average, of course, and that inside of there. And then to calculate our average, we're going to go lumber list and I'm going to say as queryable and then call for average to average basically add up all those values and divide by the number of values that we have inside of there. So there we go. And you can see the final result comes back as three, which makes sense whenever we input one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so real quick example of average, no real point in doing more averages, I'm sure you got it. So now let's see an example of all. And there's no point in me changing all these different things. Let's just keep one, two, three, four, five inside of here as our list. And basically what all is going to do for us is determine if all items in a list are going to meet a condition or not. So let's say that the condition we are looking for, we'll throw all inside of there, are all the values inside of here greater than three? That's the question that I'm asking. So to check, I'm going to come in here. I'm just going to get rid of all this stuff and I'm going to say all, and then I'm going to list my condition. So I'll go in here like that and X is greater than three. So pretty simple stuff, throw that inside of there and run it. And you can see that the answer comes back as false, just like we would have thought. And let's come in here and also check if any of the values are going to match that condition. And we can do that just by changing this to any. So any greater than that, and then change this to any, right like that and run it. And you can see that that comes back as true. All right. So quick ways to see if values are found inside of a list with all and any. And now let's take a look at distinct. I'm basically going to keep this exactly the same. I'm going to change the list. However, I'm going to have this be one, two, three, and then I'm also going to go and throw another two inside of there and another three, because what distinct is going to do is eliminate duplicates from a list. And we can come in here and see that that did indeed work out for us. I'm going to put distinct inside of here like that. And then I'm going to come down here and get rid of this guy. And to just print out the entire list without using for each and all that, I'm going to go in and go string and join and throw a comma between each of those. I've shown you this guy before. And here we can say number list three and then call for distinct to work on number list three to just give us those things that are indeed different. Whoops, I'm over here running some different things. Throw that there and run it. And there you can see it got me one, two, and three, even though there were multiple values of two and three. Okay, so it just cuts out what isn't needed. All right, so now let's take a look at accept. Now basically what accept is gonna do for us is receive two lists and then return values that are not found in the second list. So we need two lists here. So let's just go and copy this guy right here and we'll paste that down inside of there and change this to number four. Come over here and one, two, three, and two, three. We'll just leave that the way it is. And then we'll come down here and we will just have this have a value of three. Okay, so like I said, it's gonna receive two lists and return values not found in the second list. So let's go in here and change this to accept. And we can leave this be string join just like we did before. And the only thing we're gonna change here is we're going to change this to accept. Now let's go and have this be on the second line so it's easier to see. So we'll go accept. And then inside of here, we're going to put number list four. And there we are and run it and you're gonna see it comes back with one and two. Why did it do that? Because one and two were not found in the second list, but three was, and that's the reason why three wasn't shown. All right, and as a final example, I'm gonna talk about intersect, which is going to receive two lists, just like you see here, but return values that are both, that are found in both the lists. So let's change this to two and three for that, and leave this be one, two, three, two, and three, just like we did before. And here we will say intersect, like that, and then we'll come down here and just change this to intersect. Save that. Leave everything else exactly the same and reload it. And you're going to see that it comes back with the values of 2 and 3. And the reason why is because 2 and 3 are in both of the list items. So there you go, guys. Those are, there are numerous ways that we can work with lists and manipulate them and do all sorts of different things. And I hope that was useful. And just like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.